Thank you, ma'am. Take your Bibles and turn to Matthew 26. Matthew in chapter number 26, if you will, this morning. Matthew 26. We're going to look together at just a few verses here in the book of Matthew, and then we're going to skip over to 1 Corinthians together. But Matthew chapter number 26, verses 26 through 30. This morning, why I'm, I'm glad that we can stand on God's promises, knowing that His Word is true and it doesn't change. You understand that uh, God gave these words to Matthew to pen uh, some 2,000 years ago. Uh, but they're older than that. The Bible says that uh, it was settled before the foundation of the world, before God spoke this world into existence. Uh, and God's Word is still the same. It was still the same when Matthew penned it. It's still the same today. And uh, how wonderful that we can trust His perfect holy word this morning. Look here with me. Matthew 26 and verse number 26 through 30 this morning. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And He took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung in him, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let's pray together. Lord, would you help us the best we can this morning, Lord, to focus our heart, our attention, our mind upon you, Lord, to remember what you did, to remember the reason we gather this day and every Lord's Day. Lord, to remember what had to take place that we might have pardon, peace, and salvation full and free. Lord, may you truly be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians. The Lord instituted this supper we read about here in uh, the book of Matthew uh, just before he would be arrested, uh, just before he would be taken uh, and put on a mockery of a trial, uh, just before he would go and be beaten, abused, nailed to a cross, and die. For you and for me. And we see here in this passage in Matthew, we see what the Lord did that night. And we have a reminder there was a a problem in the early church, in the church at Corinth. and, And they had deviated away from God's purpose for this remembrance uh, that we uh, commemorate this morning. And God gave a teaching to the church at Corinth, and I want us to look at it this morning for us, uh, at Cornerstone Baptist Church of Edmonton, I want us to see what God's plan is for us in this matter of remembering uh, that we might honor Him, that we might follow His wishes, uh, not our wishes, not our plans, but God's. Look here at 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, if you'd start there with me following along. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus... The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. 
For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together in condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. We see a pattern here of God's plan for this remembrance, this uh, supper, this Lord's Supper, uh, that we as a, a church uh, gather together this morning to uh, share. Uh, we see in the book of Matthew, and I want to ask you to turn back there this morning, but if we read chapter 26 of Matthew, we would find that uh, those who took part uh, in that supper were the disciples gathered together. Uh, it was, uh, if you will, those who were followers of Christ, those who had trusted him. It was not something that was a public gathering. It was not something that was uh, for all that passed by to come in. Rather, it was uh, for those to whom it means something. Can you imagine showing up at someone's party, a uh, birthday party or an anniversary, and uh, walking in not knowing who it is and just being a part of that? Uh, that's not God's purpose for this gathering, for this uh, remembrance. It's for those of us who the remembrance has a very special meaning because we know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, uh, those who are born again. Uh, and by the way, the direction we see here in 1 Corinthians uh, is written to a local church, a local church at Corinth. And, and we see the picture here uh, for not only for uh, those who are born again, but those who are gathered together, the local gathering assembly in the church. Verse 26 here, notice if you will in our text, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. The Bible does not lay out a calendar for us and say, well, you have to observe it this time or that time. Uh, but the Bible says, as oft as you eat. Now, there's no right or wrong when it comes to how often. There are those uh, churches that they uh, uh, incorporate a remembrance Every service, I, I don't think that's wrong or sinful. There are those that have it once or twice a year. Uh, but I think whenever we do, that we need to make sure that it's not uh, some going through the motions. That rather, it is a remembrance, a very special thing, uh, not a tradition, not something that uh, we go uh, just because that's what we always do. And this morning, as we gather to partake and to remember uh, may we understand that. Look again in verse 24, and this is so vital. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This is in remembrance of me. After the same manner also we took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. So why is it that we gather as believers, uh, as we gather together on this Lord's Day, why is it that we would uh, partake, uh, number one, to remember what Christ has done for us? To remember. I penned a note to send to uh, Vision Baptist Church uh, that I assume Pastor Price is probably sharing with the folks today. And in that note, I, I listed a few things uh, that I was thankful for, for their church, for my family, and for our church, how they've been a blessing to us. Several years ago, my wife and I were wanting to go to a, a pastor's conference and travel to the U.S. to do so, but uh, financially, we, I realized we were not able to do so. And uh, Pastor Price had asked me about it. He said, I thought you were going there. I said, no. I said, I said right now, I said, I don't think that's going to happen. I said, not unless the Lord chips off a uh, a piece of golden streets in heaven and ships it down to me. I said, we're not going to go right now. About a, a week later, I got a, a gift in a box uh, from Pastor Price from Vision Baptist Church, and it was a rock spray-painted gold and a check uh, with some funds for us to go to that conference. And I shared in that letter how I keep that rock in my office. If you ever see a gold rock, that's what that rock is. That's a piece of uh, the paving of heaven. You didn't know it, but I got a piece. Uh, it's, a rem it's a reminder. It's a remembrance. Can I tell you that the reason we partake is to remember, the Bible says, what Jesus did for us. Uh, Jesus said, this take, eat. 
Uh, this is my body which is broken. We see here in the remembrance the, the bread broken as a picture of the broken body of our Lord as it was broken for us. The cup we remember uh, as a picture of that pure blood, that sinless blood, that spotless blood that was shed and poured out on Calvary for you and I. The Bible says, as often as you drink it, you do show the Lord's death till He comes. Can I tell you that when we partake this morning, we are showing forth, we're proclaiming, uh, we are uh, advancing what Christ did and not letting it fall to the ground, if you will. Look with me at verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Verse 29, if he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Verse number 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So the question is, what does this mean? Those verses, it talks about unworthily. What's it mean to take uh, it unworthily? The Bible says it makes us guilty. Guilty of death. Guilty of the death, the body and blood of our Lord. To take it wrongly is to take to bring damnation, the Bible says, to the observer. Uh, damnation doesn't mean condemn, uh, being condemned to hell. It's to bring judgment upon oneself, the Bible talks about. To take wrongly brings certain consequences. The Bible says for this cause, for this reason, because of this, many are sick, many are weak, uh, many are sleeping. Uh, not like you who are having a nap in the chair this morning. And it's talking about those who are having a nap under the ground. Uh, that long nap, uh, death. It's a very serious thing. A very, very serious thing when we come to something so vital and so important as this matter of remembering what Christ did how horrible it would be as we see in Scripture, but even as we think about it for ourselves, how horrible it would be for us to pervert, to mess up, to take wrongly what the Lord has done. Something very serious here. How, how would I do that? How, how could I be guilty of doing what the Bible is speaking of here, of taking it worthily? Uh, number one, by uh, taking it uh, in such a way that I uh, look at my life and my relationship with Christ, even as a believer, and I don't make it a serious thing. How do I not make my relationship with Christ uh, not a serious thing? By allowing myself to be dipped into or living in open sin before the Lord. And I praise God this morning that my salvation is not based upon my religiosity or my goodness or my good works. But in my relationship with Christ, uh, how horrible it would be for me to come uh, with a mire and muck of sin that I have uh, recently enjoyed on myself and, and want to come and honor the Lord. It would be like my dog going to the toilet and getting a big drink out of the toilet and coming and wanting to give me a kiss. Well, I don't get away from me. Understand, whenever we uh, have secret sin in our life, we come uh, un not dealt with. We are taking unworthily, uh, refusing to deal as God's Holy Spirit is working in our heart. And by the way, the Bible says He reproves us of sin. That's the, the job of the Holy Spirit. When we fight against the Holy Spirit, we, uh, we rebel, uh, we harden our heart, we grieve the Spirit. How shameful it will be for us as we are doing that to say, Oh Lord, I want to remember what you've done for me. I hate you. You see, the two can't go hand in hand. And we see that picture here. Uh, the Lord has, if you will, this matter of uh, wanting us to keep a right relationship with Him. Wanting us to remember, wanting us to honor. And by the way, one of the reasons we do remember uh, and partake is to keep it fresh in our mind, the memory of our relationship with Christ. Look in verse 28. How do I prepare myself, if you will? 
And this is always something I think is very vital for us as believers to see. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Verse 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, notice that phrase again, we would not, should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Number one, we need to search our heart. We need to examine our heart. We need to search our heart for unconfessed sin. Uh, we need to ask the Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you if you're a believer this morning. We need to ask God, the Holy Spirit, who indwells us to shine the spotlight in those corners of our heart where we have that which does not belong. Ask God to reveal in us what should not be there. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. By the way, notice it says in verse 28, but let a man examine himself. I want you to notice what it doesn't say. It does not say let a church examine. It doesn't say let the pastor examine. Or a deacon examine, or a religious leader examine. By the way, it doesn't say let the wife examine the husband. Or the husband examine the wife. Rather, it says let a man examine himself. You understand it's between you and the Lord. It's your relationship with Him. Uh, no one else is in that relationship but you and Him. And there's no room for anyone else in that relationship. But we're to examine ourself. By the way, the word confess we see in 1 John chapter 1 uh, means uh, to agree with God uh, about our sin. Not, yep, God, I'm, a, I'm sure a bad sinner, and I'm going to go back to it right now. That's where I'm heading. But rather, confessing is not just a matter of agreement, but it's agreement about the realization of what sin is. It's a confession, a realization of the brokenness and that broken uh, relationship because of sin and a matter of asking God to help that be cleaned, repaired, and done away with. We see that picture there in 1 John. 1 Corinthians eleven thirty one 31 says, If we would judge ourselves. We should not be judged. To judge ourselves means to confess, as we talked about there in John. So search your hearts. Ask the Lord to reveal sin and confess that sin and deal with it. The Bible tells us we're to examine ourselves. Pretty simple this morning. We gather together as believers, as those who have called on the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we gather together in obedience to the Lord as we come together in this local assembly to remember what the Lord has done, to proclaim His death. And by the way, we can proclaim His death because we know that He did not stay in that tomb. We don't proclaim the death of a Savior whose tomb we must visit and make a pilgrimage to because He is a living Savior. But this morning, before we do partake together as a church family, I want to I want to share a couple things with you. I want us to take a few moments in just a moment. We're going to take some time. I want no one examining one another. Rather, I want you to self-examine. Ask yourself these questions. Number one, am I truly born again? By the way, if you're not, the most important thing that you will hear, the most important thing that could ever happen in your life is for you to realize that God loves you. And Jesus died on Calvary's tree, shed his blood, had his body broken, was buried and rose again to pay your debt if you'll trust him. Number one, am I, am I a Christian? Am I, am I truly born again? Number two, this morning, ask the Lord, Lord, am I living in such a way that I'm honoring you? Ask God's Holy Spirit this morning to shine the light in your heart. Even that space, that dark place, <laughs> We won't go there. We're not going to visit there. Would you invite the Lord to shine the light there this morning? And not if, but when God reveals that sin that's unconfessed in your heart. Would you take a few moments to do exactly what the Bible says? 
to confess. God says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all, not some, not, not the little ones, all unrighteousness. Would you bow your heads together with me? As we bow our heads together with every head bowed and every eye closed, would you take a moment where you're seated to examine your heart? Would you ask yourself the question, am I truly born again? Do I know the Lord Jesus as my Savior? Do I know that I've called upon Him? If not this morning, you can trust Him today. Christian, if you say, Pastor, I know, I'm, I know that I am. I, I know that I'm saved. I remember the day that I called upon Him. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Would you ask the Lord this morning to show you, as the song says, if there be any wicked way in me? Would you ask the Holy Spirit of God to illuminate, to convict you of any unconfessed sin in your heart? Maybe wrong you have with a brother or sister or spouse. Maybe something that you've hid, something you've kept. But can I tell you this morning, the Lord knows. Would you ask the Lord to show you? And as you do that, would you take a moment to confess those things before the Lord? To realize the importance of your relationship with Christ. And by the way, it's all His grace. It's all because of Him. Lord, I pray you'd help us as we Take a few moments this morning, Lord, to remember, to partake of this supper, Lord, to show forth your death, to proclaim it, Lord, to thank you, to see the picture fresh and anew, to respark and revitalize our relationship with you because of the shed blood and the broken body. God, help us as we partake, Lord, to partake worthily. Lord, to have a right attitude, a right heart before you. Lord, may you be glorified. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I've asked a few of our men to help me as we distribute this morning, fellas, if you want to get prepared. As they're, as they're getting prepared and coming, let me explain to you the logistics. It's going to be much different than we're, we're used to. Uh, we have some men that are going to help. Uh, they're going to serve you. Uh, they're going to come by with the bread and the juice. Normally, we would serve one at a time. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do, fellas, if you just want to come here and stand here whenever you're ready. Uh, what I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment, I'm going to come down and get things for them. Uh, but as... As the man comes in front of your row and has the tray, let me ask you not to reach into the tray. Uh, if you would like to partake, if you just put your hand out, they'll serve you. Uh, they're going to give you two cups. They're going to give you a cup with juice and a cup with the bread. Uh, when you get that, if you'll take uh, the cup with juice right in front of you in your, in your pews, you'll see a little circle a ring there. You can set your juice right there in that uh, and then hold the bread. And uh, I'll give you instructions from there, but let me come and help here, fellas. Thank you. I'll have a word of prayer first. Let's have a word of prayer, thanking the Lord for his broken body and his shed blood. Lord, thank you. Lord, for the wonderful picture that we have by this unleavened 
bread. It's a picture of your sinless body broken for us. Oh, thank you for giving yourself to the death, even the death of the cross. Oh, thank you for your shed blood that we have pictured here this morning. Oh, the unfermented fruit of the vine, the picture of your untainted, sinless blood that was shed, that flowed from your bro broken and beaten body that flowed down that cross, the blood that washes away our sin. Lord, bless us this morning. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You want to hand me one? You want to hand me one of each? You want to hand me one of each? As the men go ahead and pass around, if you would, uh, just put your juice there in the cup holder and then take your bread and hold on to it. We'll all partake together in just a moment. Did you get one of mine? Did you get one? Give the fellows a chance to get seated and take off their bank robbery masks. Would you take the bread just for a moment? We'll look at that cup with the bread there. By the way, all it is is just unleavened bread, broken that it might fit in that cup for you, just as our Lord's body was broken, that he might be a Savior fit to redeem your soul. The Bible tells us in our text in 1 Corinthians 11, for I have received in verse 23 of the Lord that which also I declared unto you, the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Would you partake of the bread together this morning? It says in verse 25, and after the same manner, he also took the cup. Would you take your cup this morning, that cup of juice? And by the way, that cup is filled with grape juice, unfermented fruit of the vine. A picture, though, albeit not a perfect picture, 
a picture of the shed blood of our Lord. A picture of that perfect, sinless, spotless blood. Jesus took that cup that night and told them, it says in verse 25, when he had supped, saying, the cup, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. The Bible tells us here, this do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may partake of the cup this morning. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew that after they supped that evening, they went out and they sang a hymn and went out into the, the hills around Jerusalem. They had no idea that that night the Lord would be taken from them. But can I tell you that this evening or this morning, he was taken so they could have him eternally. And how wonderful that we can know him, we can remember him, and we can praise him. Let's close in a word of prayer this morning. Lord, thank you for the wonderful remembrance. Lord, again, I thank you for that broken body. I thank you for your shed blood. I thank you for the payment on Calvary. I thank you for that day that I realized my need of a Savior. The day that I called upon you and was born again. Well, thank you for these dear folks gathered here. Lord, I pray you bless them. Thank you for the, allowing us to come together to remember this morning. Lord, I pray you be with them as they travel their separate homes. Lord, I pray you be with the group of folks that are coming now, Lord, to be with us again. Lord, I pray your will be done. Bless us in all that goes on throughout this day. Lord, may your name be praised. In your precious name we ask it all. Amen. You may be dismissed. How many of you noticed? Oh, that's right. Uh, let me ask you if you will. Uh, a little bit of an inconvenience this morning, but let me ask you when you leave if you go out this door this morning. Uh, also, how many of you noticed uh, the toilet? Anybody notice the toilet? Did anybody use it? Praise the Lord. Uh, put a sign there, hoping you'd realize, but uh, uh, amen. Thanks for being with us this morning, and uh, hopefully I'll see you tonight. God bless.